What will we see if we go there to study them? First, we'll see Britain, the largest island of the British Isles. This is the way the island of Britain looks on our maps. The island next to it is Ireland. The political names of these islands are the United Kingdom and Ira. The United Kingdom is made up of England, Wales, Northern Ireland, and Scotland. The remaining part of Ireland, called Era, is an independent republic. Era and Northern Ireland together make up the second largest of the British Isles. One thing we might notice about the islands is that the coastlines are very irregular. We find many small islands and inlets. These inlets often make good harbors. In the smaller harbors, we often find fishing boats. In the larger harbors, we often find great ocean-going ships. And so our first impression of the British Isles is an impression of ships and the sea. Here is our second impression of the islands, green fields and carefully cultivated countryside. We'll find farms where grain is raised. We'll find farms where dairy cattle are raised and so our second impression is an impression of small, well-kept farms. We don't have to go far to find our third impression. Close to the farms are many towns and cities. Many of the cities are industrial centers, often darkened with the soot and smoke of big mills, and crowded with people who work in the mills and factories. And so our third impression of the British Isles is an impression of industries and crowded cities. Let's try to understand some of the reasons behind our three impressions of ships and small farms and industries. Having the sea all about them, the people of the British Isles have learned to use it in many ways. Fishing villages along the coast and fishing fleets in the harbors are familiar sights. The fishing industry is important because fish are an important source of food. And to the people of the British Isles, the problem of getting enough food is a big problem. But why is getting food such a problem? Living in the British Isles are more than 53 million people, and yet the islands are small. Let's compare them with the United States. Britain is not much larger than Illinois. Ireland is smaller. Yet the two islands support as many people as live in these 12 states. No wonder the people of the British Isles farm their land carefully. They try to raise as much food as they can. To understand this agriculture, let's try to understand the climate. The islands lie off the coast of Europe. They are in a high northern latitude. They are as far north, for example, as much of Canada. But the islands have a moderate climate because the surrounding ocean has a moderate temperature. Also, the westerly winds blowing across the warm water help to produce abundant rainfall. This rainfall helps produce lush green pastures, especially in Era. Here, the raising of cattle is an important industry. Much of the land in Era is used for raising cattle. Cattle are also raised in Britain, especially along the western coast, which has more rainfall. Here, in eastern Britain, where there is less rainfall, the climate is suitable for raising grain. Farmers grow oats, barley, rye, and wheat. On this farm in England, Men and boys are threshing grain and baling the straw. In addition to general farming, the farmers of the British Isles have long been noted for their development of fine livestock, an important source of beef. Another source of meat for food is sheep. On the island of Britain, one of the regions suitable for raising sheep is here. 
In the cool, moist uplands of Scotland are grassy fields where sheep thrive. And yet, even with the food from livestock and from crops, Britain does not raise enough food. To help solve this problem, the British people have turned again to their ships. Their ships carry the food that is continually imported from other countries. And how do the people pay for this food? By exporting manufactured goods, by continually shipping goods to other countries. To understand what these exports are, we must understand the industries of the islands. Industries depend upon natural resources. One of these resources is coal, which is plentiful in Britain. Britain also has deposits of iron, often close to the coal. Iron ore is important to industrial development. Even more important is the coal that has been called the foundation of British industry. These miners in Wales are some of the million men who work in the coal industry. This miner is using a mechanical cutter to loosen the coal. Coal has long been one of the surplus resources that Britain can export. Most of the coal in the British Isles is used in British industries, especially in the manufacture of steel. In the terrific heat of the great furnaces, workmen are getting ready to draw off the molten iron. Products made of iron and steel are among the most important exports. These exports include iron pipe, tractors and other farm machinery, steel locomotives and cars, and many kinds of structural steel. The steel and iron industry has developed in cities which are close to coal and iron. Other cities specialize in pottery as the main manufacture. In others, textiles are the main industry. This is one of the textile manufacturing cities of Britain. The raw cotton is imported from the United States, Egypt, India and other cotton producing countries. Textile machinery developed by British industry is used by skilled British labor to turn the raw cotton into cotton cloth, one of the most important exports of Britain. And of course, there are many other kinds of exports. Beautiful linen made in Northern Ireland. Woolen fabrics made in Scotland. Pottery and fine china especially the famous Wedgwood ware made in England. Cutlery made of fine steel and many kinds of electrical goods. The people of the British Isles also build many ships for their own use and to sell to other countries. This tremendous development of shipping is part of the export and import business which links the people of the British Isles with all parts of the world. The city of London is the center of this ocean trade. London is not only a great port, but is also one of the leading commercial cities of the world. We can understand the importance of commerce and trade to these people because we have seen that they depend on a continuous exchange of goods in order to live. Food must be imported continually. To pay for this food, manufactured goods must be exported continually. In carrying on this trade, the people have turned to the sea that surrounds their islands. And they have developed shipping and commerce to a high degree. Because the islands are small, the people have learned to use their land wisely, to farm it carefully, without waste. The people of the British Isles have also developed special skills, industrial skills of many different kinds, skills that are used to make many kinds of products. These products have helped to make the British Isles one of the great industrial centers and trading centers of the world.